Welcome back to another Inventor in tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to look at uh, finite element analysis and how to do this within Inventor on just a very simple single part uh, object. Uh, we'll then run the report and we can then utilize that report in, uh, in our assignment uh, for, for what we need to do. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So I've jumped straight in and I've loaded up an IPAR in a uh, uh, in a part file. Um, I've drawn something quite basic, uh, just sort of like a swing arm type scenario, um, and I want to do an FEA analysis on it. Um, I haven't actually associated any materials, uh, so it's currently generic. It's just as generic material. Um, but we can do that in the actual FEA analysis. So we'll come up to our, our top bar and our environments and uh, we're going to select environments and then stress analysis is our first icon in the panel itself. So we'll select that. And the first thing we're going to do when we come into this environment is we're going to create a study. Uh, we'll get this pop up. Um, there's really nothing to change here, so we'll just click OK. And you can see on the left hand side we've got the tree uh, has been uh, pre populated with some uh, various uh, branches which link to really the, the, uh, the top panel across the top here. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll sign a material. So I'm going to select Assign Material, and we get this pop up, and you can see that. Our original material is generic. Um, we haven't defined any overridden materials and our safety factor is looking at the yield strength. Um, we can, if you may have already selected uh, your material uh, in, in, this, uh, in the iPart itself, if you have and you're happy, you can just click OK. Or as what I can do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the original material and I'm just going to select ABS plastic. So you may find that actually your original material is ABS plastic. Your FEA analysis shows that uh, it won't be strong enough and therefore you can very quickly come back and just change the material by overriding it uh, to a different material, run the analysis again and uh, it might show you that it, it, it then uh, is more suited using a different material. But for this moment we'll override the material as ABS plastic and click OK. Um, we now need to fix uh, a point or a, a, a face or an edge um, because uh, we need to be able to fix it so that we can then apply a load at a given, another given point so we can create a bending stress. So we're going to miss out the prepare panel and go straight to the constraint panel and I'm going to select fixed and uh, the, the uh, so I just select the fixed uh, constraint from this uh, constraints panel. It's asking us for a location um, and because I've done this one before and I know this sort of the I'm, I know what I'm looking for I know what sort of uh, areas work for fixing a constraint within an FEA analysis um, I'm going to go straight for the hole um, and say the face of the hole is where I want to fix it. Um, this may take some uh, some trial and error to work out what gives the best results and the best look. Um, but once you've uh, found that uh, that area that works, you can click apply and uh, you know, then cancel that. And you can see that we have this little glyph, this constraint glyph here in the middle. So it's showing that it's fixed through the uh, face of the hole, which is ideal. Um, nothing else in the constraints panel, but we now need to put a load. Uh, and we're going to apply a force and we're going to apply a force to the opposite hole. So I'm going to find that uh, face or the edge again, whatever you need uh, or want. Uh, and I'm going to select that face. And you can see it's uh, it's applying a force in this x direction, or this x axis here. Um, we could flip the direction so it faces directly opposite. Um, and if that's arrows pointing in the right direction for your particular analysis 
you can just go ahead and put in the magnitude in newtons. Um, I don't actually want that because I want the uh, force to be acting in the uh, y direction, the y axis. So I'm going to use vector components. Now I will just put in 100 newtons into the y direction, and now you can see the uh, the arrow is acting in in that uh, um, y axis. So once you you could use a combination, so 100 in x, 100 in y, and and it will give you a slight angle, or use whatever whatever sort of uh, combinations, or just in the y or the x. Really, uh, you can really do what you need to with this. When you're happy, just click apply, um, and then we'll cancel out of there. Um, and now what we need to do is generate the mesh. The mesh is the level of detail. So if I just click a mesh view, uh, just off the screen, I had a little pop up, which was just giving a sort of a, a, a time to generate the mesh. Um, now you can see the mesh is made up of triangles. Each triangle is called an element and where the triangles meet, that's called a node. The more elements and nodes that you have, the more detailed the analysis will be, and obviously the more computing power uh, you will need. Um, now, depending on your computer and the, the piece that you're, um, piece that you're uh, doing an FEA analysis on, you, would, you may want to change the mesh settings. So there's a little icon next to mesh view called mesh settings. Uh, this gives this pop up here. So if I change it by a factor of 10, so I just put a zero in there, uh, click OK. I then have to come over to the tree and just right click on the mesh, update mesh. Uh, we've got the little pop up off screen. You can now see the mesh is much, much tighter uh, and more refined, more elements and nodes. Uh, this will give you a more accurate, uh, a more in-depth FEA analysis, but will also, like I said, take much more computing power to do. Uh, so I'll just revert back to the old number of elements and meshes, uh, me uh, sorry, the mesh average element size and the minimum element size. size. I will update the mesh again. So instead of doing a total sort of uh, global mesh control, so changing the complete me mesh con uh, density, we want to just do a local uh, change in the mesh density. We can use our uh, local mesh control uh, icon in this uh, next to mesh view. Um, and it's asking what face or edge we want to increase the um, uh, increase the mesh density on. So I'm just going to select the uh, flat top face here um, and you can see it draws a blue uh, line around it. Um, and I'm going to, cha I'm going to actually change uh, my element size to five millimeters. Now this is very, very dependent on the size of your um, component. If you're doing a very large component and you go to five mil, then obviously there's going to be a huge amount more elements in it. Um, so you've got to be a bit careful with this. Sometimes it's a bit of trial and error. So I'll click OK. Uh, and then I've got to come over to the uh, tree and just right click um, and update the mesh. And you'll see it's now updated that mesh just locally in this top section here. Uh, and you can do many different uh, areas that you want to uh, locally update. But that's fine for a minute. So now what we'll do is we'll just uh, simulate uh, 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 and click the simulate button and we'll just click run and it will now run an FEA analysis on our um, component. Uh, you can see that uh, our maximum stress is in and around this radius here uh, and it sort of dissipates out. So again we've got the stress, uh, the amount of stress on our left hand bar here, our color bar, um, and we're using the von Mises stress theory. Um, and we can have a look at our first principal stress by double clicking on that and we can see we've got our first principal stress going in under underneath. We've got our third principal stress as well, our displacement and I'm just double clicking on these areas and then our factor of safety. And you can see we've got a factor of uh, 
minimum factor of safety of 1.46. Uh, so uh, this is actually working out quite well. It depends if you want to go with a 1.46 or higher as a factor of safety. Um, we can we can get that report uh, as a generated report. So if we uh, left click on the generated report, uh, we'll get this pop up here. Uh, it's got a report title and just a, we can what we want to do is we want to uh, change possibly the, the file name. It's going to come in through as always as an HTML file, so it'll link directly to a website. Um, but we can the pictures can be saved locally uh, on your hard drive. So I'm just going to change the drive and the file location. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just um, put them in my uh, pictures for a minute in my camera roll uh, and just click OK uh, and we'll keep the file name the same and I'll just click OK and it's going to run through all the different stress analysis uh, elements and it will then create this report here which you'll be able to use to go through and cut out the bits that uh, you need and, and maybe write a report on that. Um, and it, you, it goes through uh, as we've showing where you've we've selected the, the to fix the constraint and the different faces that have been selected and then the forces and where these have been applied and and then all the different uh, uh, pictures and that we've looked through in the actual uh, inventor. So you, those are also saved to your hard drive um, in that folder that uh, you allocated those pictures to. Um, so if we go back to Inventor, <clears throat> now you may want to, to change this. You may want to now uh, uh, update it uh, and, and refine your design to better uh, carry or better dissipate the stress and loads found on it. Uh, you can, if you just want to change the material, you could sort of right click on the material here um, and click the assign materials. You'll get this uh, pop up back and you can then just go and change it to, we'll just change it to aluminium and we'll click OK. And we now need to update our results. So we can just uh, right click and then click simulate and run the simulation again. We still get in the same sort of uh, maximum uh, stress, but uh, our say if we double click our factor of safety, I mean we're well up there in the fifteen uh, times fifteen factor of safety. So uh, completely overbuilt using aluminium for the forces that were applied. Uh, if the force isn't particularly high enough for what you're after, we can right open up the tree, right click on force edit the force load and we can put it up to whatever we want and adjust it. Click OK and then we just got to right click and simulate it again. And because we're not really changing much it's only really going to be the factor of safety that changes. Well now by increasing it to a thousand newtons made out of aluminium we've got a factor of safety of 2.01 just in and around that region there. Um, what is really, really powerful is that you could get quit very quickly, just go back into your, you could finish the analysis and we could just change, uh, for instance, the radius type. Um, we could, you know, we could do something a bit crazy, change, adjust our, adjust our fillet size, click OK. And then we can go back into our stress analysis. Uh, we can update all the various right click and update our automatic contacts our mesh and then we can simulate the mesh again so I'll run the simulation again and now you can see that we've now moved the stress further down we've got a bit more of a stress on the main arm um, we could have a look at our factor of safety well we're well within now we're running at a minimum of 3.86 with a thousand kilos and we've moved and we don't have a, a stress point or a stress razor edge just by changing the design. 
So that's uh, that's how you would go about uh, using the FEA analysis. It's relatively intuitive, um, and it allows you to very quickly adjust your designs uh, to better work with the loads that uh, may be placed upon uh, your component parts. So hope this uh, this tutorial has been useful to you. Uh, don't forget to come back for some more uh, Inventor tutorials and I will see you again soon. Cheers.